Hello, this is Allie with the Perception Trainers, author of the Perception Diet, and today we have the very final installment in the Why You Need Emotional Mastery series. So if you haven't watched all the other parts, I've put the link down below. Please go and watch those first, and then come back to this one at the very end. So, now you see what this whole emotional mastery thing is about. It's essentially about you taking the time to love all the traumatized aspects of yourself back into the light of your consciousness, which then will lead you to a place where you can start to reconnect with your higher self, right? The part of you that sees and knows, that already sees and knows and has complete peace about everything that's ever happened to you and sees and knows the reason why all of those things happen to you, right? And then as you develop um, the ability to connect with that part of yourself, you're going to bring that loving presence to the wounded aspects of yourself over and over and over again until you come to a place where you are complete with what happened to you. Meaning, you no longer feel traumatized by anything that went on in your life up until this moment. And of course, right, for most of us, this means that we start with acknowledging that we feel traumatized. So we stop running around like chickens with our heads cut off, thinking it's about the body, thinking it's about our diet, thinking it's about, it's about our husband, thinking it's about our job, da 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 trying to, you know, manifest and change reality and all this stuff, and we realize it's just trauma inside of you, right? And then you acknowledge that you feel hurt and you feel sad and you feel angry and you feel all of these things about what happened to you. And you love that part of yourself, right? And then I said, then you start to connect with the higher part of you, bring that loving presence to the traumatized parts of yourself and watch how that transforms everything that you believe and everything that you see and how you perceive your world, okay? So again, remember it, that at the end of the day, we are not the cause of our pain. Pain is inevitable. Pain is a part of this life journey. But we are ultimately the cause of our suffering. Always and forever, each human individual is the cause of their own suffering, meaning taking the painful incident and making it mean something about you and about the world and then allowing that to dictate how you see everything and to allowing that to um, be the reason you build up a resistance to reality, right? And then when we are in resistance, we suffer. And this is just bottom line. So even this, okay, if hearing that hurts you, go love the wounded part of yourself, really. Go love the part of yourself that is traumatized. The second thing to know is that your suffering is not what makes you special. You are not special to keep suffering. Your suffering is not what makes you awesome. Your suffering is not what makes you, yeah, it, it, it adds nothing to you in so much as you identifying with your suffering. So that also, if that insults you, if me telling you that your suffering does not make you special, go and look, why do you want to believe that your suffering makes you special? Why do you want to believe that that's the thing about you that is unique and that is divinity, that is the thing that you're here to be? Why would you want to reduce all that you are down to the suffering that is coming to you due to your perception of your experiences? Why would you want that? Just think about that, okay? So again, Remembering that this whole process is about completing with your wounded so that, number one, you don't suffer in your life anymore. And again, remembering this doesn't mean you're not going to experience pain in your life. You will experience pain. Your friend, right? Because you are still cohabitating with seven billion other people. And as much as we like to, you know, believe in the power of manifestation and law of attraction, da 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 you don't have control, complete control over your circumstances, right? Your, the love of your life can decide to leave you and there's nothing you can do about that. Your best friend can pass away and there's nothing you can do about that. Your animal 
can get sick and pass away, and there's nothing you can do about that. And so to, to understand that there, we are never going to reach a level of enlightenment or a level of control over our reality where bad things stop happening, right? What we want to do is we want to get to a place where we no longer perceive anything as being bad, where we start to understand that everything that happens is happening to awaken us, okay? So understand this. The ultimate truth is there is absolutely nothing you can do about your past. You cannot change what happened to you. You cannot go back. You cannot undo it. You cannot fix it. You cannot change it. You have no control, no power to fix or change your past. So if you want to let that be what causes you to suffer for the rest of your life, you are perfectly entitled to do that. And this is another thing that I said in the other video, and I will state it again. Everybody has a legitimate reason to stay in their suffering. Every single human being has a legitimate reason to stay in their suffering. Every single human being has a legitimate reason to identify with their suffering and to say, this is who I am. This is my story. This is what makes me special. I'm not letting go of this. You know, the thing that happened to me was the absolute worst thing and it should never have happened and it was deplorable and I hate it and it's, I'm never going to be okay with it. And you absolutely have every right to stay in that place. This is the thing. Every single person, the suffering that you have gone through is 100% legit if you want to let that be what continues to make you suffer for the rest of your life. But know this, you don't have to. Because you cannot change what happened to you, and because you do not have control over your future, as much as you want to believe that you can control the circumstances that are going to befall you for the rest of your life, you don't have complete control over that, right? You are cohabitating on a planet with 7 billion other people. There, you do not have control over what everyone else does. You do not have control over the results and the impact of what everyone else does. But in this, instead of feeling like you are a victim to your past or a victim to what everyone else is going to do in the future, you can allow all of that trauma to bring you to the realization that the one thing you have control over is your consciousness. The one thing that you have control over is your consciousness. How you are going to perceive your reality. So, you have the choice to look back on all your past experiences and allow that to drag you deeper into fear, to drag you deeper into suffering, to drag you deeper into resistance, to be the reason you cannot be happy, the reason you cannot be free, the reason you cannot trust, the reason you cannot be at one and at peace with reality. You can do that. Or you can allow everything that you've been through, every experience you've ever had, every painful experience you've ever had, to be something that reminds you of who you actually are. Something that breaks down the false ego identification you have with this world and with yourself that is painful. You get to decide whether everything that happened to you and everything that is going to happen to you drags you deeper into delusion, into fear, and into separation, or if it's going to be the catalyst that awakens your consciousness to love and peace and unity. You get to decide that. So now understand this. We are coming out of the age of the Messiah, okay? We are coming out of the age of the Savior. We are coming out of the age of the Guru. We are coming out of the age where we believe that something outside of ourselves is going to rescue us from our circumstances, from our suffering, and from our pain. We are now being called to understand that no one, no thing, no religion, no nothing is going to absolve suffering for all beings. The truth of the reality is each individual is responsible for waking up out of their own suffering.
The only person you can rescue from suffering is you. And the only person who can rescue you from your suffering is you. Right? So we can be light bearers for one another. So know this. So let's just continue on. The, we keep waiting for a religious figure, a spiritual figure, a governmental figure, a parental figure, a friend figure, a guru figure, someone to come and save us from our suffering. And then on the other side of that, we have people who believe that they are here to end suffering for others. And they are on a mission to alleviate suffering. And both of those ideas are two sides of the same coin. Both of those say that there are victims and victors. Both of those say that there are people who don't have power and people who have power. This is not true. The absolute truth is each individual has the exact same amount of power to absolve their own suffering as any other being. There is not anyone on the planet who has less than you and there's no one on the planet who has more than you. We are all equal in this. We have all had different experiences. We have all had different perceptions. We have all had different life circumstances that were all designed to wake us up. But ultimately, it was all for the same purpose. And again, you get to decide whether you want to believe that what happened to you is the reason why you have to suffer for the rest of your life. And if you want to look at it that way, you will. And you can. There's no rule against it. Right? But just understand that that's the deal you're making with yourself. That if you look back on your past and you say that I cannot, I do not want to ever love the, the being that went through that. N nor do I ever want to love myself enough that I no longer feel like that was wrong. Right? That you are making a deal that you will suffer for the rest of your life because of what happened to you over something that you cannot change. You have no control over. Okay? So just know that you're making that deal with yourself. Or you get to choose to say, I maybe don't know how. I maybe don't understand why. And I definitely don't feel like it right now. But I'm going to choose to believe that everything that happened to me happened to me to wake me up. It was all for my good. It was all for my sovereignty. It was all to remind me that I am in complete control of my consciousness that no one and nothing can take my sovereignty, my freedom, my peace, and my joy from me unless I give it. Because that is really what happened. And even if you were a child, you didn't know this, that is legit, but you are an adult now. And you get to take all of that power, all of that joy, all of that freedom, and all of that bliss back by completing with what happened to you. Okay? So, like I said, we're done with the Messiah age. The way that suffering is going to be absolved on this planet is one individual waking up from their suffering at a time. That's the only way. There is no savior. You are the Messiah of your life. I am the Messiah of my life. My sister is the Messiah of her life. Okay? And now to all my light workers out there. Okay? To everyone out there who looks around and sees the suffering of the world, and just wants to get rid of it. I hear you, okay? Your heart is beautiful. Your intention is pure. Th this is lovely. But know this. The part of you that believes that you are responsible for saving other people is the part of you that actually is victimizing other people. You are saying that you have more power to save other people and to rescue other people than they have to rescue themselves. And the truth is you don't have that power. You are not here to absolve the suffering of anybody else. What you are here to do is absolve the suffering in yourself and then live in that place where you no longer suffer. Because understand this. You living in the place where you no longer suffer. So again, remember it. You're still going to have all the human emotions. You're still going to have all the human experiences. You still are going to miss your flights and stub your toe and have best friends pass away. And all these things are still going to happen to you. But your perspective and your 
your vantage point of all of those things will no longer be from a place of fear and trauma. You will be able to have all of your experiences from a place of joy and peace, even though you're sad, even though you're angry, even though you're all of these things, you will still have that underlying peace, that underlying understanding that everything is for your good and everything is for the good of everyone else. There's no such thing as a mistake. No one is suffering in a way that they shouldn't be. And I know that that sounds horrible in a lot of ways. But again, remember, each individual has responsibility over their own consciousness. Are you going to allow what's happening to you to wake you up or to put you back to sleep? Right? And each individual has to make that choice for themselves. And by you allowing yourself to make that choice for yourself, even though everyone else is suffering, even though it looks like there are so many people who are suffering who shouldn't have to suffer, children, women who are being victimized by men and killed and raped and all this awful, all these awful things that are happening. Yes, that stuff is happening. But to, for you to use that as an excuse to not wake up from your suffering is doing them a disservice. You understand, you staying in suffering because other people are suffering is not rescuing anyone from their suffering, okay? So you wake up from your suffering, you live from the place where you no longer suffer. Now watch what happens from that place. You are not going to become apathetic, sitting on a mountaintop, not giving a shit about anybody else. Understand this, you will have shifted your vibration, your perception, your understanding, your, your being to a place where you no longer are suffering, therefore you are no longer in fear, therefore you no longer create more chaos on this planet. And instead you, your presence, your being, your perspective, your understanding creates order. Because when you're working from a place of trying to fix the suffering, you are working from a state of fear, as in this is not how it should be. And when you work from a state of fear, you can only create more chaos. And I know that that's a tough pill to swallow, but understand that. When you are working from the problem, you can only create more suffering. You can only create more chaos. When you move yourself to a state of love, and you live from that state of love, all of your actions that you will be inspired to take will actually facilitate, create space, for other people to move themselves out of their suffering. So again, you're not going to do it for them. But you can move yourself to a place where everything that you do is from this place of completion, from this place of love, from this place of creating order in your own reality that then sets the stage, sets the container for other people to look and see, okay, that is something that I can do. Right? You no longer talk to people like they're suffering. You no, no longer act like they are incapable. You no longer act like they are in a state that they cannot get out of. You will elevate your perception to a place where when people come into your presence, they literally will be able to step themselves into a new place to see their own suffering for what it really is, an awakening mechanism, and they will be able to awaken themselves. The actions that you take to alleviate or to create the container for peace and order on this planet will actually be effective. You will not be working from the problem. You will be working from the place of the solution. And that is what needs to happen. So you completing with your own suffering is not leaving people behind and saying, your suffering doesn't matter, and I don't care about your suffering, and I'm now apathetic to everyone else. You need to understand the only way you're going to create the container, which is what the only thing we can do for each other, is create the container for other people to end their own suffering, is to end it for yourself, live from that place, watch how all of your actions create the container. So create the container. It's your job to create the container. Liberate yourself and then live from that liberated place. That is the only solution. Suffering will be alleviated on this planet one person at a time. One person taking responsibility for their consciousness at a time. Realizing that by living in your trauma and living in your suffering, you create chaos. When you complete, you create order. Your choice. All right? So like, subscribe, share, follow, do all that great stuff. Uh, join the Patreon group. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and yeah, 
I'll see you in the next video.